I'd like to thank the Minister for his statement today and to responding to questions. We'll do the, pet we'll do the petition first and then we'll come on to uh, points of order. Chris. Oh, was it? Oh, I've been told points of order are first. I'm sorry, Wendy. I stood down. Um, first of all, Karen Smith. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I have informed the relevant member of my uh, raising a point of order. On 10 January, the Honourable Member for Uxbridge and South Ryslip asked an oral question to the Prime Minister about Hillingdon Hospital in his constituency, in which he said the new Hillingdon Hospital has full planning permission, full funding and enabling works are well underway. However, a Freedom of Information request has revealed that, in fact, the total funding for the redevelopment of Hillingdon Hospital is to be confirmed, and I further understand the start date for both the procurement of a contractor and construction of the hospital is also yet to be confirmed. So, given that the Honourable Gentleman may have unintentionally misled the House on a matter of great concern to his constituents, I seek your assistance, Mr Deputy Speaker, in asking him to set the record straight on this matter. I'd like to thank the uh, Honourable Lady for her point of order and forward notice uh, of it. She clearly has made public um, her views on this matter, and whilst I'm not responsible for the contents of <coughs> ministerial uh, responses, I would draw it to the attention of the Treasury bench in order to bring it to the attention of the Minister, in order that if they have unintentionally misled the House, that they are able to correct the um, record as soon as possible. Point of order. Thank you uh, very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I wanted actually to uh, clarify the record on something that I said in the House yesterday, which it turns out on further uh, investigation wasn't entirely accurate. I have been campaigning for quite some time on the fact that supermarket chains have been charging motorists in Chesterfield several pence more than they would be in charge just a few miles up the road, and uh, uh, took the opportunity yesterday during Department for Energy questions to once again uh, bring this to the attention of the House. Uh, the work that my office have done uh, since then has actually discovered that prices in Chesterfield are now the same as they, are, they were in Chesterfield, but very slightly less. So I want to give credit to the supermarkets who appear to have actually put in place the changes that were needed, but also to make sure that I took this opportunity to correct the record, um, because when I said that Chesterfield Motors were being overcharged, they no longer are, which is a very happy thing, uh, and I wanted that on the record for me. I can see motorists speeding towards, uh, well, perhaps not speeding, <laughs> <laughs> heading towards the Honourable Member's constituency in order to fill up, fill up, and that is when somebody unintentionally misleads the House how to correct the record with speed. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I thank him uh, for that. Point of order, Sarah Olney. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Reports today that Thames Water have been lobbying the Government and Ofwat to let it increase bills and face lower fines come as the company seeks to avoid a potential £18 billion bailout from the taxpayer. It seems clear that the UK's largest water company is teetering on the brink of collapse. My constituents and all of the 16 million people who depend upon Thames water across London, the Thames Valley, Surrey and elsewhere will be deeply concerned about what a potential collapse of Thames water would mean for them. We know that the Government have prepared a contingency plan for that event. This was confirmed to me in response to a written question that I tabled this month. However, in the same response, the Government refused to make that plan public. The prospect of a multi-million pound bailout means that this has ceased to be a purely commercial matter, and there is now a significant public interest in the publication of these plans. Could I please ask your advice how I might compel the Government to come to this House to pro provide some reassurance to my constituents as soon as possible, and on what measures this House can take to ensure that the Government publish its contingency plans for the event of Thames Waters collapse? Thank you. I'd like to thank the Honourable uh, Lady for her uh, point of order and a forward notice of it. Um, the Honourable Lady has already done a lot of work on this and therefore she knows the avenues to go through, but uh, there, she can always seek advice from the table office uh, as to how to pursue this matter further, but it will also have been heard by the Treasury bench <coughs> as well to bring it to the notice of ministers, whilst it is not uh, the power of the Chair to comp compel ministers to come here, they will now have heard the point of order that she has made. So I'm grateful for that. We are now coming 